Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel, Machining with Joe. So this week we're going to be carrying on with the quick change tool post, and just in case you missed the last few videos, I'll quickly show you where I'm at. We've got this. Got this really nice machined quick change tool post body, all done. So in here we've got a hole where our locking pistons are going to go, and this big hole at the top is where the eccentric shaft is going to be sitting. That eccentric shaft is what I want to get done in today's video. So going back to my 3D printed one, which I designed on CAD, we got exactly the same quick change tool post body here, and the hole where the piston goes, just a 20mm piston that goes in there, and this is the part I want to get done today. If I've got enough time, Hopefully we'll get the piston done as well, because that's a really easy thing to machine. But the eccentric shaft is what we need to get nailed and get this thing bang on. Because this is what's going to be pushing the piston in and out. Too much sort of eccentricness, is that, is that a word, eccentricness? Basically too much throw from this shaft is going to make this piston go way too far out. So I need to get the cam lobe on this thing spot on. So. To do this, oh, I've got some 50mm EN1A steel. So that's what we're going to be making the shaft out of today. I'm going to get this thing cut down and we'll head back over to the lathe once I've done that and see what we're going to be getting done in today's video. Over on the lathe then, we've got our cut off piece of stock up here in the four jaw chuck. And as you can see, at the minute we've got a fair bit of run out in the part. So, first of all I need to straighten all this up. So, adjust this with the four jaws, get this thing running true, and then we can just start doing some machine work on this piece. After a bit of playing around then, I finally got this fairly good. Probably could do a little bit better if I wanted. There's maybe 0.02 mil run out there, but it's not too bad. So to begin with, I'm going to turn 50 millimeter length down to 40 mil diameter. So I'm not actually going to take that much off. I ordered this stock to be 50 mil, so I didn't actually have to turn down a massive amount. So I'm going to get on turning that down, and then I think the process after that going to drill this out so I've got to drill a 20 mil through hole all the way through this as well so I'm going to crack on with that we're currently just over five millimeters of depth of cut now so about halfway there I'm running the lathe on power feed with a 1.5mm depth of cut as I go and so far the finish looks really good on this and getting good chip control so thumbs up it's going well according to the hand wheel my cross slide then I've taken off 10 millimetres worth of stock of this. So, currently it's reading 40.87 and the hole in our block is 40.5. So I've not got much more to go. One final pass on this and we should have a nice snug fit in our tool post. So I'm doing a 0.4mm depth of cut, which should give a really nice final finish on this and take it down to the final dimensions we need. Moment of truth, does this slide in? Does, but I think it's just getting caught in a burr. There's just a tiny little burr in there. Let me go quickly clean that up and we'll come back. 
Well, I think all that bird's gone now. Let's see how that fits. Like a glove. Well, really happy of how that fits on there. That's a really nice fit, good tight tolerance. Super happy of that. So now that goes on there quite nicely. And we've got that to the final dimension, or outer dimension needs to be, sorry. I think the next thing to do is gonna to be to drill a hole. So I've got to drill a 20 millimeter through hole all the way through this piece. So I've not got a lot in the jaws here. I'm gonna to have to be really careful with this drilling operation, but I'm gonna go in, slowly open it up, and then once I think I've opened this up to a 20 mil hole, I'm gonna come back, offset these jaws, and put a cam profile on here. So it doesn't actually need to be the whole length of the part. I think I'm still gonna have about 10 or 15 mil worth of round stock here to hold on to when I machine the top part of this. But for now, let's get drilling a hole. Starting to get to the larger size drill bits now then. From now on I'm going to be going up in 2mm increments, starting with 14mm which one now, and finishing off with 20mm. <laughs> now we've got our through hole all drilled in this piece of work then, we can focus on the really important part of this build, which is getting a nice offset onto this eccentric shaft. So I'm looking for about a one millimeter offset, and to do so, I've come up with a plan, which we'll see if it works. I'm not too sure, I'm hoping it will. So my plan is, I've set my DTI gauge up on this jaw here, and I'm gonna offset this that way by 0.5 millimeters. Then the plan is to do this jaw back up, so it goes that way, tucks it all up tight. Once I've done that, I'm gonna check the offset on this part then, and hopefully that will give me the one millimeter offset that I'm after. So let's give it a go. Right, we got our half a millimeter offset there, and do this one up. Right. Hopefully now when we check this with a clock, I'm hoping that's going to have given us our offset. So. Right, that's not actually worked. We've got a massive offset now. I'm going to quickly clock this up to give it a millimetre offset. And once I've done that, I'm going to come back. With a slight adjustment then, we've now got our one millimetre offset, which is brilliant. Next thing to do now is to start to turn this cam eccentric shaft down. So I only need to actually take down the bottom 30 millimeters of this, which will work out pretty well because it's going to give us a nice surface up here to hold on to when it comes to working the top of this shaft. So I'm going to mark this up and when we come back we're going to start turning this down and we should start to see a cam load profile start to form on this. So with a 0.3 millimetre depth of cut, gonna start working down this shaft. To begin with then, it's only gonna be taking off very little parts, because where it's an eccentric shaft, it's literally gonna be taking off the high spot. So let's pretty stop the lathe there a minute. 
and we should be able to see what we've got left here. So it's cleaned up this part of the shaft really nice. And now we've just got this still shaded red section here, which I want to get that down to quite a thin little sliver. So I'm going to carry on with doing these passes. And hopefully in a couple more passes time, we should be at a point where this red line is really faint and we know up here we're going to have a nice high spot and the rest of it's going to be a low spot. Well, I've probably overcooked that a little bit. I think I might have got about 0.1, maybe 0.2 mil too much on the depth of cut. But it's not going to affect the part at all. Just means there's a very slight lip here where, in theory, this high spot here should have been completely flush. So I can take this now and we're going to head over to the bench and test this out on the tool post and just see if it's going to work how it was meant to. I couldn't really be any happier with this part if I tried. So the eccentric shaft has come out really well and if we just check on how much movement we currently have, I've got a DTI gauge set up, I'm going to push it all the way into it butts off and it might be a little bit hard for you guys to see from that angle, but as I turn the eccentric shaft, we've got about, there's about, it's probably just over one mil of movement on there. So that's worked out really well. Next thing I need to do now is because this looks too bulky and pretty hideous at the minute like this. I'm just going to add a nice chamfer down here to give it a little more, bit more of a sleek design. So I'm going to head back over to the lathe now, chuck this back up. That's why I've left this cylindrical shaft here, which is con concentric to the actual shaft itself. So I can grip on here and we'll start to add a nice tapered chamfer on this leading edge. Not too sure how this tape is going to turn out then, but I've set my compound rest to 20 degrees according to the scale on the slide itself. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start turning this shoulder down until the taper goes all the way from the top up here down to the bottom. So no real science behind this. Compound rest, 20 degrees, start taking material off. Let's do this. Right, this should be the last pass then, and then this taper will all be finished. After that, I can go stick it back on the tool post and see exactly how this thing looks. Might even quickly knock up a cheeky brass piston just so we can have this as one finished piece. Well, we ended up getting quite a lot done in today's video. So, just quickly knocked up this brass piston here. And now when I rotate the top, we've got a nice bit of in and out movement, or out and in even. So just as a quick prototype, I knocked up just one of these. So I need a way of bolting this down. And although this isn't the final piece I'm gonna go with, I'm going to go with something with a similar design to this just because it's simple, it's easy and it's going to be a good way of getting this quick change tool post going a lot sooner than I thought. So that's pretty impressive actually. Over the last four videos we've gone from what was initially just a, a concept, a CAD drawing, taking it over to the 3D printer, got this thing 3D printed and from that we've actually got ourselves over to a full metal quick change tool post. So I'm really excited to get this thing into use and see this thing in action. That about sums up today's video guys. Really happy of how we've been getting on recently with the Quick Change Tool Post. It's amazing to actually have something that you've made from scratch. So really excited about getting this thing into action. I think what really we need to do now 
is get some tool holders made up for this thing. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing in next week's video. I'm going to get some metal ordered up and start making myself a tool holder to go onto this. So I think to start with, I'm just going to make one tool holder, get it fitted, get it dialed, see how it fits on there. Because before I attach any handles or locking devices, I need to know that a holder goes on here and locks in firmly. So that's what we're going to be doing next week, making a tool holder for the quick change tool post. Until then guys, have a good week, happy machining, see you next time.